Welcome everybody, welcome to the Ecolinguist Live show. Uh, this is uh, yet another episode of the online live show for language nerds and geeks and uh, and all of you guys who watch the Ecolinguist channel. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that uh, you are back to the show. Uh, as usual, um, once a week we meet up and hang out and improvise language challenges together. So this is a, a live calling show. That means that you can call me into uh, the, the software that I'm using right now and we can just improvise language challenges, you know, and just have some fun with languages. So I see actually that some people already are calling in and that's great. Uh, those are people that are, uh, I think, are already um, been on the show. So. Before I add them in, I just want to give a chance to new people to to, to call in as well, uh, just so um, you know that I can only have like up to four people at a time in the stream. That's why we're going to like uh, give uh, uh, try to give a chance for everybody to call in. But for tonight, I've prepared um, some mm, uh, challenges with identifying languages. We did that like two weeks ago, so you are welcome to, to join uh, us in, even if you don't speak any uh, Romance, Slavic or Germanic language, you can just call in and we can improvise all kinds of challenges, like guess the language challenge as well. So that's that's totally possible. Um, <clears throat> so for all of you who are new to the show, uh, if you want to uh, be part of it, you have to register. Uh, the link is in the description box. You can just uh, uh, follow the link and you will get to it will get you to the registration form. So register and you will get the instructions uh, how to join me live. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, CA is just asking how, how does it work? So uh, basically you just fill in this form. So I have your contact details just in case I need to contact you after the show. Uh, and you should get an email with the link um, to the instructions on how to get to this uh, show live. Um, yes. Uh -huh. Let me switch back here. So, uh, by the way, if you already registered because you watched the previous shows and you just didn't uh, didn't make it, you you, you weren't able to connect. You don't have to register again. Uh, the same, the link that that you used before is still valid. So, um, just just try uh, try to call in tonight. Yeah, and I see you guys write uh, in uh, write messages in chat in all, all languages. That's great. The thing is that I can only read Polish, English. Uh, um, uh, Polish and English uh, uh, chats. So, so if you have any questions to me, just ask me uh, those questions in Polish or English. That's going to be much easier for me. Modjoru uh, ish, siastok. Of course, I, I I can also read Hungarian, so you can ask questions in Hungarian as well. <laughs> Uh, I was checking if there are, there are any Hungarians uh, uh, watching this. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is, there is a number. Uestet, Uestet, Kivanok. Um, uh, all countries connected. That's right. So this, this show is basically about, uh, you know, bringing people together, having some fun with languages, learning something about each other's cultures, but mostly focusing on uh, having fun with languages, fun challenges, uh, the way we do it on the Ecolinguist channel. Uh, so we have all kinds of formats that we can uh, improvise here, like the mutual intelligibility format that you could see uh, here, right? So we have empty boxes here. We can uh, fill them up, uh, fill them in with people who are calling in. Uh, and we can improvise the kind of challenges that you see uh, on the Ecolinguist channel in, in regular videos. Um, what else? Uh, uh, <clears throat> the language 
guessing game. That would be great for tonight because because I did some preparations and I, I I hope it's gonna work. I made some improvements. Uh, I added the cups of satisfaction into the software, so if someone wins, they can actually get a virtual reward. That we uh, award reward reward. Sorry. Um, yeah. So actually, you see, I, I see a new person calling in. Uh, let me meet Max, maybe. Um, okay, give me a second. I'm going to add you uh, guys in, in, in a moment. Uh, first, let's start with Max. Hello, Max. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you, Max. Uh, uh, Max, tell us where are you calling from and what languages do you speak? Um, I'm calling from Germany and uh, I speak Ukrainian, Russian, English, German, uh, some French and Polish as well. Uh huh. Okay, so you speak uh, languages from all three language families covered on the channel yep. basically yep. yeah yep yes that's that's good and, and uh, which one, which language is your native language ukrainian and russian mm -hmm. great so this is your first time in the show have you seen it before do you know how it works more or less uh i don't know how the show works but uh i've seen a lot of your videos before mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it would be an interesting experience i guess uh okay okay that's great so, um, uh, so since you speak a Slavic language, you know, you, uh, do you have yep. an experience with Polish at all? Yes, yes. Yeah, you have some experience with Polish. Maybe you could mm -hmm. uh, improvise a channel, a challenge for me. Then maybe you could uh, describe something to me in uh, Ukrainian or Russian, um, mm -hmm. and I would try to understand. What you're talking about so so basically i have to say something in ukrainian or russian and you'll try to translate it and i will try to like uh, figure out what you are talking about what you're describing okay, okay. so i'll try you with ukrainian yeah uh okay let's start then you already have a word in mind я лінгвіст перекладач і я вивчаю різні мови Uh -huh. В тому числі, наприклад, японську та кримсько-татарську. How about that? Okay, so I understood that you, you just said that uh, you are um, a linguist and you are a translator. You work with Japanese right. language, right? Uh, no, I'm, I'm learning them. Ah, you're learning. Uh, uh, it, it, Japanese, yeah. Okay, so maybe a linguist in in uh, Ukrainian uh, means also a person that is interested in languages, right? Or do you also do you? Yeah, work... I'm generally interested. Mm -hmm. in yes, language. so you you don't work professionally uh, as a linguist or a translator. Uh, no, at least not not at the time. Yeah, yeah. So that that was an easy challenge, of course, because also the context is is very clear. Uh, so so yeah. I uh, I was able to understand that, but the idea is to maybe describe a word like an object of or like a profession or something a bit more abstract. Okay. Uh, I okay. mean, if you need some 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 help uh, with figuring out the word, I can give you a link to a, a word generator. It's I'm going to send it uh, into chat so you can just uh, uh, check it out. Yep. Yeah, and it, it will give you some ideas about like what words you could. Uh, uh, I'm not seeing. Or where is it? Oh, yeah, so there, there it is. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, OK, how it works, generate a Pictionary word, let's say medium. Uh -huh. Birthday. Well, it's actually two words in Ukrainian, but uh, 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 yeah. So don't don't tell me the 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 Ukrainian word. It's it, this is the word that you don't want to use. Oh. You just want to use like the, the to to talk about it, you know, but not revealing mm -hmm. it. And then I will be responding to you in Polish, asking questions, but and we will try to communicate. But do you have to describe it in English or in Ukrainian? In Ukrainian. In Ukrainian. Okay. Uh, тож, це е, інструмент, яким можна прибирати сніг 
або mm-hmm. копати землю. E, Okej, okay. so, my, myślę, że mówisz o jakimś narzędziu, którego używamy do kopania w ziemi. Mm-hmm. I jeszcze do czegoś, czy możesz powtórzyć, do czego używamy tego narzędzia? Dla przybierania śniegu. I do, śnieg to... Do odgarniania śniegu, do odgarniania śniegu, mm-hmm. tak. tak. E, więc myślę, że chodzi o um, do kopania w ziemi i do odgarniania śniegu. Mm. Może być dwie różnych, tam w zależności od tego, jaki, jaka wistria, jaki kinec u instrumentu. Odni bilsze podchodzą dla kopania ziemi, a inni bilsze podchodzą dla przybierania dla przybierania śniegu. Rozumiem. Myślę, że chodzi o łopatę. Łopata? Tak, tak. Łopata, so. uh, which in English is like a sho- sho- shovel? shovel? Shovel, uh, shovel and it also could be a spade because uh, there are two terms in English. Yeah, and uh, what is the word in Ukrainian? Lopata. Lopata. So, łopata in Polish and... Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Miguel just 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 uh, spelled it uh, out for us. Thank you, Miguel. In mm. Polish, Wopata. Uh, okay. Th- so that that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> uh, good. So Shufla do śniegu. Shufla. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that uh, as well. Wopata albo shufla. So when, when you in, in when you Polish. said when you said that um, you know it's also used to to dig. Uh, in, in uh, dig, dig something out or dig earth, I realized mm. that it could be either of those two things. But shufla is more for um, dealing with snow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. And in, Hunga- in Hungarian, actually, actually, it's lopat, lopat, which I think it's as, as a Slavic um, loan word in, in Hungarian. So that's kind of interesting because Hungarians as, as uh, you may know uh, Hungarian language belongs to the Ugrofinic uh, language family, mm. but because it's surrounded by Slavic languages all, all around, it's, it has lots of loan words, especially w- words that related, are related to agriculture and, and uh, stuff like that, because they used to be nomads. And when they settled in, the, in, in Europe, they learned how to farm from Slavic people. That's why so many words in agriculture come mm-hmm. from Slavic languages. Great. So you said you say you have another word. Uh, I asked, uh, do I have to? Mm, maybe like... you, maybe you could do another one, maybe something more, more, more difficult. Uh, you can actually set the mm. when you generating the random words, you can set the levels like easy, medium, more mm. difficult in yeah. that link. So you can check it out. OK, mm-hmm. uh, I generated another one. So uh, це е, пора року, ну точніше не року, а це подія, вона відбувається влітку, коли влітку стає дуже спекотно. Mm-hmm. І через це урожай або взагалом рослини дуже страждають, вони зневоднені. Mm-hmm. Więc mówisz, że to jest jakaś pora roku, tylko e, przez porę roku rozumiesz, że to jest jakiś e, e, okres w roku, jakieś święto, czy jakiś określony czas? To, to nie konkretny czas, ale e, zazwyczaj w litku jest pewny period, kiedy staje duże spokotno. E, jest bardzo spokojnie? Nie ma konkretnego. Spokojnie, tak? W tym nie, spe, spokotno. Nie, spokotno w sensie e, garyczy. Mm-hmm. Nie wiem, czy, czy rozumiem, co to znaczy. Czy możesz to jakoś. Y... Uh, mm, gorzące. Y, jak się ja nie pomyliłem z polską. Gorąco? Uh, jest gorąco? Uh, tak. Jest bardzo gorąco. Y, tak. czy, to, czy to dzieje się każdego roku? Uh, nie obowiązkowo, ale zazwyczaj to trafia się każdego roku. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ym, dobrze, czy to wiąże się też y, z, y, z, ty, z, z tym, że ludzie 
cierpią z tego powodu? Tak, tak. Im spokojno, one pitnieją, ale najgorsze w tym fenomenie to, że ziemia zniewodniuje i strażdają rośliny. Rośliny najbardziej cierpią, tak? Tak. Dobra, więc myślę, że to będzie upał albo fala upałów. Fala upałów. Upał. Ja nie wpewniony, co to znaczy. Like a heat wave. Yeah, it's it's almost like that. It's drought. Drought. Okay, so so how is that going to be in uh, Ukrainian? Posucha. Posucha. In Polish, it's going to be susza. Mm -hmm. Susza. Yes. Uh, thank you, Samuel, for spelling it out for us. Samuel, uh, susza. Uh, okay, yes. So you said that uh, uh, it's dry, right? Sucho. Like how, how do you say that tak, in Ukrainian? Posucha. Po, posucha. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's great. That's great. So so I think this this was a slightly more difficult, more abstract. So that was a, a very good word for the challenge. Mm -hmm. But I see, I see that many people are calling in. So what we could do, because uh, you mentioned that you are interested in different languages. Uh, how are your language guessing skills? I would say it's decent, maybe slightly lower than decent. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So you know what we could do? So... I could add some more people and maybe you could all kind of try to identify languages together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think you, you froze for a second, so, so just. Uh, yeah, that that happens from time to time. Uh, uh, that would be great, I'd hope. Okay, so uh, just wait. I'm going to put you into a green room for now, just so I I can meet uh, other callers and then we can uh, continue the challenge. Okay. Sure. So, so don't go anywhere. I'm gonna get back to you. Um, so. Let's meet uh, maybe uh, Simone, who is a new new caller. Um, yes. Hello, Simone. Hi, man. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi, Simone. Uh, tell, tell us, wow. uh, where are you calling from and uh, what languages do you speak? I am calling from Southern Italy mm -hmm. to from, from Sicily. And uh, yeah, from the far from the poorest part of my country, by the way, I I speak but, Italian. But very beautiful. <laughs> Thank so you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it indeed. I speak, of course, English, Italian. Uh, if you want to call it a language, I speak Sicilian too. Great. Some yeah. people call it a dialect. Some people call it a language. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the threshold is kind of thin. We actually had Sicilian featured on the channel uh, uh, a couple yes, of I times. Yes, I know it. I'm well aware. I'm well aware of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's a very beautiful language. Uh, we had Sicilian featured uh, um, a few months ago. Uh, we were comparing Sicilian with Catalan, I believe, Spanish. Yeah, maybe with uh, with other Roman Portuguese. Languages. Yes, Definitely. yes, and we also had uh, the the episode featuring the Arborish uh, language, which is uh, like, um, like Albanian spoken in Sicily, am I right? Yeah, it's like a language that kind it's of. a contact language that has evolved kind of through uh, interactions of like ancient Albanians with, 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 with Sicilians. Um, yeah. And I am kind of, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you guys can check, check those uh, videos out if you haven't seen them. But yes, Simona, what did you want to say? Oh, I just wanted uh, to say the languages that I'm currently studying, and uh, I'm studying Arabic since my my fiance lives in Qatar and she's a citizen, and I'm currently you know studying her another dialect, but studying Arabic. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I will catch up with her dialect and uh, Spanish, and Bulgarian and Hungarian. Okay, that's great. So so you you speak languages from. Uh... Oh, different uh, can, language can, families. I, I'm, I'm still a beginner. I'm still a beginner in many of them. Yes, but I can. I can tell you. Um, I can 
almost completely understand Spanish unless it is a very, you know, uh, weird dialect. Mm -hmm. um, English, of course, and I feel quite confident with Romance languages in, in general. Uh, what about your uh, language uh, identifying skills? Like, how do you feel about like languages recognizing languages from all over the world just based on the recognizing languages the uh, well that's interesting i was um i was hosting i was hosting a um, a show on on hello talk and we were doing the same the same game uh you know man when it comes to slavic languages um i'm sorry to say but they sound almost all the same for me <laughs> but i i can try i can give it a try yes i thought that we could potentially do that challenge uh uh today mm. um Definitely. so before we, we we move on though i'd like to add another person christopher who already called uh called me before like, a few weeks ago and uh first let's talk to him and then we'll get back to to you okay uh okay. so just give me a second um Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Christopher. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. I tried to get to the other live podcast since, but uh, it's been very busy. Yeah, so I'm glad you, 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 you managed to call back. So actually, for people who, who don't remember you or haven't seen you, tell us where are you calling from and what languages do you speak? I am calling from Tallinn, Estonia. I'm a native Estonian. Uh, I also speak English, Russian, uh, and also some French. Mm -hmm. uh, great. And how good is your Russian? Uh, B1. I don't mm -hmm. converse that well, but I can maybe understand a bit. Okay, that's that's interesting. So just just asking. So potentially we, we have a potential for a challenge later on. But yeah. but last time when you were calling in, we were trying to do the I guess the language uh, uh, guess the language game, but it didn't work out for technical reasons. So yeah. I I hope that to, today it's gonna work out. So uh, let me just bring more people to the screen here. Um, going to have, we're going to have Max, uh, yes, mm, give me a second and let's do this. <laughs> yeah, so here we are all together. We've got Max, um, we've got Christopher and we've got Simone. So uh, the, the idea for the challenge today is to, to guess languages. So let me just check if this is going to work. If you're going to hear the, the language samples, I'm going to play you a language sam sample and you need to um, uh, you need to buzz in actually to be able to give an answer first. So buzz in. Uh, uh, meanwhile, when I'm going to uh, figure out how to play you the samples. I'm going to give you a link to join the buzz in uh, the online buzzer thing. So you can I, you can it, you can use it either on your mobile devices if you have mobile phones, or you could also just open it in your browsers and, and buzz in with a space bar. Okay. Did you get the link? Because actually I sent it through the yeah. interview chat. So uh, where is it supposed to be? I cannot find it. Um, right hand Chantal. side. Here it, is. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. So so we're going to test that in a second. Um, <clears throat> but first, let's start uh, a simple darf kein Unterschied gemacht werden aufgrund der politischen Did you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. You, you've heard that. So, so don't don't tell me what language it is. Obviously, you know. But I just want I would like to test the the buzzer uh, system with you before we start, okay? So, uh, have you all logged into the buzzer online buzzer? Yep. Yeah, so um <clears throat> I'm going to start the buzzer and then 
I'm going to start playing the sample and whoever gets the language first, uh, whoever buzzes in first gets to answer uh, the question what language it is, okay? So sure. I'm going to start the sample and you press the buzzer. Des Weiteren darf kein Unterschied gemacht werden aufgrund der politischen... Okay. So, it's... Christopher, you were first. What language is it? Uh, German. German, yes, this is correct. So, as you see, uh, <laughs> everything worked. You see who, uh, who was first, because on that buzzer thing you, you can tell uh, who was first. Um, and don't answer until uh, one of those appears, okay? Because I need to like just double check which uh, uh, buzzer came in first. Okay, so tell me guys, what level would you like to play this game at? We've, we've got uh, easy, medium or hard? Let's start with a medium, I guess. Yeah. Let's medium. start with the medium. <laughs> start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going if it's to too hard. We go down. If it's too easy, we go up. Uh, yeah, we can yeah. do that. Actually, I'm going to keep score. Uh, okay. So we've got Max, we've got Christopher, and we've got Simona. Um, so basically. Uh, whenever you uh, start, whenever I start playing the sample, uh, you can buzz in any time. Okay, and then you have your attempt, and if you guessed it wrong, I'm going to play the sample again, but you won't be able to buzz in again. You will have to like give a, a chance to to other two players. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. And by the way, because because I don't really know what language samples we're going to hear. So if um, if it's going to be one of your languages, like the, the languages that you speak, obviously uh, we don't want to ruin the game. So you just don't buzz in basically. And we're just not going to count this language uh, to the final score. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we want to uh, let other people have a chance to, to, to guess it possibly. Mm -hmm. Great, so I guess we can start. The Bundura Ajaman studio to post it to Ebong Postim Bonge, Dui Bongote, Utanto Jono Prio, Robindo Shongit Silpi, Jini Akon Kati Shishi Rotten, Shirizona Chodri Bona, from Proti Australia of Software Asia Chilen, Canberra Chilen, Ebong Akon Sidnite, Amade Unro de Uni Studio Tesachen, Amade Sota de Jono, Unar Kichukotam Rakon Shunbo, Pinkamanatsen, Pito Dirgo Din Dure Gan Gatchen, Amade Sota de Ki Bolbenki, Japni Kobe take up Nare Gane Shuru, Mani Kobe take a Ganga or Shurukolen. Nobody's going to buzz in. <laughs> uh, Max, yes. That may be Albanian. Uh, it's not Albanian, no. no. Don't we have hints? Mm, you uh, Maybe let, let's try again. Okay, try again. Listen to it again. But Max, you already have your chance. So let's let's give the, the other two uh, uh, the, the chance to guess it. Uh, so we'll listen uh, in again. Tabundura Ajama the studio to Postit Hoetsen, Ebong Postim Bonge, Dui Bongote, Utanto Jono Prio, Robindo Shongit Silpi, Jini Akon Kati Shishi Rotten, Shirizona Chodri Bona, from Proti Australia of Software Asia Chilen, Canberra Chilen, Ebong Akon Sidnite, Amade Unro de Uni Studio Tesachen, Amade Sota de Jono, Unar Kichukotam Rakon Shunbo, Pinkamanatsen, Pito Dirgo Din Dure Gan Gatchen, Amade Sota de Ki Bolbenki, Japni Kobe take up Nare Gane Shuru, Mani Kobe take a Ganga or Shuruko Simona. I'm lost, honestly. I'm lost, but uh, I, I will try with uh, Nepali. No, unfortunately, it's not that. Uh, so, Christo Christopher, do you have any guesses? I'm thinking between some... I, I heard some romance uh, influence, maybe, but I don't know if it's like the Indian subcontinent or maybe more Iranian. Uh, so my guess that... is maybe my guess is Turkish. 
no no it's not turkish so what we're gonna do uh, now uh, i'm going to read three uh, potential answers okay uh, and you will be able to buzz in the moment you you think that you know the the, the correct answer okay mm. um okay so there are three possible options Latvian, Bengali, or Hindi. Mm -hmm. Simone. Bengali. Yes. You got the point. Maybe you were you were the fastest, I suppose. Because <laughs> uh, that was that was quite difficult, this one. I, I guess I guess the the family. I guess the right family. I said yeah. Poly. Mm -hmm. They're related. Uh, yes, yes, and uh, Christopher, you also kind of identified. Yeah, I'm the... so I'm so unaware of the Indian area and the surrounding areas. There's so many languages to know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know it's the medium medium level. So we'll see how, how it's gonna go. You know, I, I I didn't prepare it in advance. It's just like a random uh, language sample we're gonna hear again. Uh, okay, then. So I think. We are going to start with another one. This is the first time in Rockdale, Cogra, Bexley, Trinlessons, Carton, Kings Grove, Bhagbari. Cool. So, we have a part of the Nirvatan Chetra. Simona, you buzz in first. Yes. Um, Tamil. Uh, no, it's not Tamil. So let's try again. This is the first time in Rockdale, Cogra, Bexley, Trinlessons, Carton, Kings Grove, Bhagari. Cool. So, we have a part of the Nirvatan Chetra. 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 No, unfortunately not. <laughs> Max, do you have any ideas? Mm, not really, no. Marathi, maybe? Uh, also, no. No. So, we're gonna do this again. Uh, I'm going to read uh, three potential languages to you. Three, poten three, three options. Uh, and you will have to buzz in and tell me which one that is. Okay? So... Is this Malay, Filipino, or Nepali? Simone? Malay. No. <laughs> it's oh, not, okay. not Malay. Not Malay. Uh, so, guys, you can try to buzz in again. Yeah, Max. So it's Nepali, after all. Yes. <laughs> That's the Nepali one. <laughs> yeah. uh, great, congratulations. Uh, what gave it away? Um, I believe the accent, uh, as Simona mentioned, Nepali and other Indian languages are mm, closely related and they have mm, similar pronunciation as well. In, in Not necessarily always, but many times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. I can... I can hear the red of like consonants. The, 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 I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so this is a quite difficult, difficult level. Um, but I think, let's see, let's see if the third one is going to be slightly easier, or maybe we're gonna change the level to, to something easier uh, to continue. Okay, uh, right. so you have a chance. So let me reset the buzzers and let's start. Apelował papież podczas swej dziesiątej pielgrzymki na terenie Włoch. W czasie swej toskańskiej pielgrzymki Franciszek zaznaczył, że taka postawa może przyczynić się do odnowy Italii, przeżywającej aktualnie wiele kryzysów. Zdecydowanie upomniał się też o prawo do godnej pracy, szacunek dla migrantów. 
Simone? Uh, Ukrainian? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not Ukrainian, but thanks for trying. So we're going to continue uh, playing the sample, okay? Um... Apelował papież podczas swej dziesiątej pielgrzymki na terenie Włoch. W czasie swej toskańskiej pielgrzymki Franciszek zaznaczył, że taka postawa może przyczynić się do odnowy Italii przeżywającej aktualnie. Christopher? Russian? No. <laughs> it's not Russian, no. So, um, Max, it's your turn. Do you want to I, listen I to Russian, Russian, but yeah, okay. it, it's, it's... It's Polish. It's Polish, obviously. Yeah, it's correct. I, I know Polish. <laughs> That's why I you know. Yeah, okay. That's why yeah. you didn't. Yeah, buzz for in. me it's obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't buzz in because I want to give you a chance. Yes. So, so we are not going to count this to towards the the final score mm -hmm. because it it was just too obvious, you know. But uh, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> interesting that you guys recognize that it was a Slavic language, but you couldn't. Uh, figure out which one it was mm -hmm. not that far um okay so yeah let's try this one now okay Intant din il-ġimgħa kienu pubblikati aktar figuri li huma ta' tħassib, fosthom irrati tal-beħ fil-ħwienet li huma pjuttost diżappuntanti. Sergio Bonnici, konsulent finanzjarju, u jgħid li l-koalizzjoni lanqas qed taqbel fuq il-politika tagħha stess, wara kollox imma kemm hija vijabbli industrija għall-manifattura tal meta tista' timporta karozzi li huma orħos minn dawk immanifatturati hawn. Simone? Sounds like a broken Italian. Mm. It sounds like a broken Italian, but it's not Italian. <laughs> so what's your what's your guess? Uh, Maltese. Um, correct. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> Yes, that's wow. Maltese. I thought that uh, Maltese is like Arabic. With, but it is. Okay. I guess you it take, has you so take much uh, Italian influence. Still in I actually, uh, I've been thinking the direction of some sort of Galician or Catalan language. Uh, but uh, yeah, I um, remember that uh, English is one of the official languages on the Malta. And mm -hmm. uh, that's why you have this R sound, not typical for Romance languages. Uh huh. Yes, I mean, it sounded very interesting because I don't really get to listen to Maltese that often. Um, but yeah, you got this. You got this, Simone. Yeah, and it was quite misleading because uh, you chose like a sample with a lot of Romance terms. While uh, it depends, you no, know, you can have a lot of Semitic words, a lot of Romance words, 50 50, mm -hmm. it depends on a lot of things. It was like a misleading sample. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you guys are ready for the next one, uh, how many we've mm -hmm. got so far? Um, okay. Mm, so let's do this. this. This one, yeah, you will, you will see. Christopher? Cosa? Correct. <laughs> yes, that is uh, the Cosa language. Uh, <laughs> what gave it away to you, Christopher? The, the click sounds. The click yeah. sounds, yes, yes, that's that's exactly that. Uh, guys, uh, did you have any ideas before Christopher buzzed in, or? Yes, yes, I was about to to pick out that is one or um, another language from the same part of the continent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, so that's good. We're, you know. Weirdly enough, my first thought was Afrikaans. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, but it, it, the 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 click sounds they they give it away. But there are obviously other languages also that use the click sounds. But the the Kosa language is the most kind of known. 
Uh, yeah, I just uh, said the most uh, famous click sound uh, language. Yeah, so yeah. you got this. You got this then. Okay. So I was worried uh, for nothing because you, you got this. Um, okay. Let's restart the buzzers and listen to this one. Wote backboard na ble good wanakabiliwa na mashtaka uhalifu dhidi ya binadamu. Takriban watu elfu tatu waliuawa baada ya bagbo kukataa kuachia madaraka kwa mshindo wa uchaguzi huo alasa na watara. Hapo siku za nyuma mawakili wa bwana Bagbo walihoji uwezo wa kiafya wa bwana Bagbo kuweza kushiriki katika kesi hiyo. Lakini msemaji wa ICC Fadi El Abdalla anasema uwezekano wa kufuta kesi ambayo sasa imepangwa kuanza hapo Januari 28 mwaka ujao. Simona. What a backbone na ble good. I don't I don't have any guess. I will I don't have any guess. I will say Indonesian. Um no, it's not Indonesian, but thanks for trying. So, uh okay, let's reset the buzzers. <clears throat> and listen to the sample again. Now just Max and Christopher. That's the sample for you. What a backbone na ble good. Wanakabiliwa na mashtaka uhalifu dhidi ya binadamu. Takriban watu tatu waliuawa baada ya Bagbo kukataa kuachia madaraka kwa mshindo. Christopher. Ase Malai. Um Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> the wrong sound. <laughs> Don't yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um uh, Max, any ideas? Lao. Lao slang. No. no, no. So we're going to do the same thing again. So uh, get ready to buzz in when I read to you <clears throat> three uh, potential uh, languages that it could be. So is it Swahili, Armenian, or Haitian Creole? Christopher? I think it's Haitian Creole. Uh... No, no, it's not a uh, uh, Haitian crawl. So you guys can uh, buzz in, uh, yeah. Uh, then Swahili, I guess. Yes, that's Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you got this, uh, Max, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I haven't had uh, any Swahili speakers on my channel, but we had Haitian crawl video, if you maybe you've seen it before uh that was made like more than a year ago maybe two years ago it was it was fun uh, i i believe if it was haitian creole then i believe we would would have heard some french words yeah i'm thinking now it should have been influenced by mm -hmm. the romance languages but this one sounded very foreign away from europe Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, even though like Swahili, we, we often hear like in songs and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe they just didn't use the words like 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 Kijambo or, uh, or stuff like that. Hakuna Matata, isn't it Swahili? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yes, okay. So, so far, uh, Max, you've got two points. Simone has two points. And Christopher, you have one point. So what we can do now... Is I think we're going to do two more languages, okay? Two more languages, and then we will see uh, uh, who's gonna win this this round. So, if you guys are ready, we can play another sample. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Og vi skal fortsatt snakke om dopingrapporten som det internasjonale antidopingbyrået la fram i ettermiddag. 1417 russiske dopingprøver skal ha blitt ødelagt med overlegg, og sikkerhetspolitiet i Russland har deltatt i jukse. Rapporten viser også omfattende korrupsjon og hemmelighold. Kristoffer? I'm gonna guess uh, Norwegian. Og vi skal fortsatt... Correct. <laughs> This is Norwegian. It, uh, I thought about... Uh saying Swedish, but it was a bit different from Swedish in some way. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's that is correct. So 
uh, your mind went straight to, to uh, Norwegian, Swedish first, and then Norwegian. Yeah, Scandinavian was the first thought, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then to figure out which one. Yeah. What about you guys? Would you guess? Would you have guessed that? I no, would have said Frisian. Frisian. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and Simona, what what was your no, guess? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I was so far from the Scandinavian peninsula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's Norwegian. You know, if you if you listen to it like out of context, <laughs> then it might take you places. Uh, great. So we have a tie so far. So let's see if that final language is going to make things clearer for us. Um, let's clear the buzzers and start this one. Dichiarazione universale dei diritti umani. Preambolo. Oh. <laughs> Simone. <laughs> I don't know this language. <laughs> I think you. I think um, you know. Uh, we all know, pr probably, right, guys? Do you know? Yeah. What it is? Yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly Italian or similar. Yeah. To it, yes. Yes, this is correct. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> I am sorry, Norbert. Please forgive me. Uh, Simone, so what would you say? Like, is your native language uh, Sicilian or Italian, or you treat both of them as as your native languages? In my heart, I would say that uh, Sicilian is my native language, but you know, on the paper, it should be Italian. Uh, but I feel more, you know, I feel more at ease, and I have a lot of fun whenever I meet a Sicilian speaker, or you know, it's like. Uh, it is mistreated here, Sicilian. They think it is a language for those who didn't have a proper education, but I don't think so. I completely mm -hmm. disagree. And okay, my my final answer would be Sicilian. I feel that my native is Sicilian. Yeah. Yes. So um, because you know sometimes you have two native languages, you know, or three native languages, you know. It depends on the the situation and and the culture of your country. Like uh, Max, you you said like you have two native languages, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, in Estonia, for example, uh, you have only one language, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there is no doubt there. Uh, but in Poland, for example, we also have minority languages like Lemko language or Kashubian language. You know, that people strongly identify with. Uh, or Silesian dialect that is trying to gain the status of a, a separate language, but it, it hasn't uh, uh, gotten it yet. But, you know, so even like if you speak with a local dialect to many people, it's uh, it's a very important part of their identities, you know. Uh, yes. So okay. what we, <laughs> this yeah? is not going to count. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to count yet yeah, uh, towards the points. Um, mm, mm, mm. so, okay, so I think this one could be interesting. Are you ready, guys? Er staat die androecium met andere woorden, die maden, die goed wat die sperme, in termen van plantstructuur, produceer, dis gewoonlik een filament met een helmknop daarboe aan, Denk een beetje aan tierlelies, als je dan aan ruik is, je neus vol stuifmeel, je kan het skaars afkry. Duidelijk het hier. Max? Uh, Neverland. Uh, God, God, I forgot how to say it proper in English. The, the, the Netherlands. Uh, Dutch? Language. Dutch, uh, yeah, yeah, God. It's, it's in German. Uh, otherwise, okay. <laughs> Dutch, uh, Dutch, Dutch. your answer is Dutch. It's not Dutch, though. It's, uh, okay, so so let's let's uh, uh, <laughs> give a chance to Christopher and Simone. Um, let's listen to it again. Er staat die androecium, met andere woorden, die meeldraden, die goed wat die sperme, in termen van plantstructuur, produceer, dus gewoonlijk een filament met een helmknop daarboe aan. Denk een beetje aan tierlelies, als je dan aan ruik is, je neus vol stuifmeel, je kan het skaars afkry. Duidelijk het hier restructuur dan een vaste functie, en dan natuurlijk is daar die kurpel waar die. Simone? I will go with uh, Danish. It's not Danish, no. <laughs> Thanks for trying, Christopher. 
Do you have uh, ideas? It's a mix of German and and Danish for me. And so I think the language is in North Germany. It cannot be that far left into Dutch and Flemish areas, I think. But I, I, I don't know any languages in Northern Germany. So I cannot guess. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, obviously uh, none of you, you, you guessed it. Uh, let's do the the buzz in one more time when I read you the three uh, options, four options this time, okay? There are four options. Um, so get ready. Is it Swedish, Norwegian, Korean or Afrikaans? Simone. Swedish. <laughs> no, it's not Swedish. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. so let's let's try this again so now do you guys want me to read the options again or you already have your um, uh, ideas okay Christopher Afrikaans yes <laughs> yes great so uh, Christopher this is the correct answer and that means that you won. Good job, <laughs> man. <laughs> I think you... the last one was uh, who can press the puzzle quicker. Uh, yeah, because this in this game, you know, it's not only about uh, uh, identifying languages; it's also about uh, uh, being the fastest, you know, in buzzing in. But uh, that's great. So, uh, Christopher, you started off slowly. Right, you were getting the points. Yeah. Uh, started getting the points later on in the game, but you got this. So great! Congratulations. There were lots of Asian languages at the beginning, and I'm quite bad at those. But of course, uh, you are all winners. <laughs> uh, yes. So I just wanted to take this of the screen uh yeah so so guys thank you so much for 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 doing this it's, it's been so much fun um and it took us almost an hour wow <laughs> um so so what we can do next you know i see there are some, there are some more people calling in so i'm going to uh we'll have to disconnect for now you know and i'm going to uh, try to talk to some other people and see what kind of challenges we can uh, still uh, do today. But uh, thank you guys for joining in. It's been fun. Thank you. It has been a pleasure, Norbert. Thank you so thank much. You, yeah. uh, thank you very much. So uh, we can just disconnect for now, but uh, let's see who who we've got here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got Nisa. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so wh what's your name? How, how do I pronounce your name? Nisa. It's a Nisa. Swedish name. Swedish name. So, so where are you calling from, and what languages do you speak? So, I'm calling from Stockholm, and um, yeah, like I almost said, um, I have Swedish, and um, I grew up in Barcelona, so I speak Spanish and Catalan, and I've studied other Romance languages as well. Okay, so, so uh, would you say that you are like fully trilingual, like? Oh, is there a language that you consider your native language uh, more than others? So, so my native language is Spanish, and I'm not even fully bilingual because my Catalan is slightly weaker than my Spanish, mm -hmm. and my Swedish is definitely <laughs> weaker than uh, yeah than my Spanish and Catalan. It's on par with my English, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, uh maybe yeah probably you could take a part in a challenge featuring either romance languages or germanic languages basically mm -hmm. uh you, you don't have any experience with slavic languages no unfortunately barely if at all uh-huh okay okay 
So let's see um, who we can add in this case. Um, okay, I think we're going to add uh, Cal. Just give me a second. Yes, first of all, I'm just going to change the screen. So don't go anywhere, uh, Nisa. I'm going to figure this out. Okay. Or actually what I'm going to do is just no, this is not a good one. <laughs> uh, one moment. Here we are. <laughs> Hello, Carl. Uh, Hi. Carl, you are uh, a frequent caller. You've been on the show before. But just, yep. uh, just to remind us, uh, where are you uh, calling from and what languages do you speak? Sure. I'm, um, I'm calling from the Netherlands, uh, from, from Eindhoven. And uh, my, my, my native language is Bulgarian. And I speak uh, English, French, and uh, Dutch, barely. <laughs> Uh, okay, you're, you're studying Dutch. That's that's interesting, right? Uh, you said that you just uh, started, so um... yeah, it's like n n not even a one level. I would say it's like very bare bones. I can get by answering basic questions and stuff like that, but not not go into like detailed conversations at all. It's just barely reaching a one, even if at that. <laughs> Okay, no worries then, no worries then. So I think we could try a challenge with Romance languages then, uh, potentially, right? How good is your uh, uh, French, Cal? My understanding is better than my speaking. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, so I'm not sure. I haven't spoken French in quite a while, so I may be very rusty. <laughs> and mm -hmm. may even speak in broken French, but my, my understanding is definitely higher than mm -hmm. my speaking. Uh, okay, so maybe maybe we could uh, do a challenge uh, featuring the Catalan language, Nisa. Yeah, uh, so uh, Nisa, if you could like describe to, to us a word in Catalan without revealing the word to us, just like try to describe the concept and we will try to uh, figure out what you're talking about. Because I, I, I uh, studied some Spanish in the past. Uh, my Spanish is not very, very good, but it's, it's all right. <laughs> I can get by. So that would be interesting for me as well. Um, so Nisa, do you need any help with finding the word? potentially no no i'm fine you already uh, already <coughs> thought of one you already have one okay uh let's do that then so um whenever you're ready Nisa, you can start speaking catalan molt bé doncs és una és una paraula que vol dir un animal de companyia és un animal que no és gros, no és super gros, no és super petit, és un animal de companyia mitjà, relativament mitjà. Mm. I eh, potser és l'animal de companyia per antonomàsia, l'animal de companyia més normal, més habitual. Teniu preguntes? Sabeu? Uh... Uh, uh, donc, um, uh, um, j'ai compris que c'est un animal, mais je ne peux comprendre si uh, cet animal est un, est un animal en maison ou uh, uh, 
Pluton, animal, uh, um, uh, o, o, o village, <laughs> um, um, un animal um, uh, qu'on peut trouver uh, dans un um, dans une ferme, plutôt. Ya vos, históricamente, abans en el passat mm -hmm. era un animal de granja, era un animal que més rural. Però ara, avui, és més normal un animal de casa, un animal de companyia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entonces, yo tengo una pregunta. Eh, ¿Qué tipo de personalidad tiene este animal? Es un animal bastante sociable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Oh. He respondido en castellano, perdón. Uh, <laughs> entonces, Forza en social. catalán. Uh, uh -huh. ¿Es que está uh, uh, un chien? Mm. Sí, uh, sí, yo sí, pienso correcto. que un perro, ¿sí? Sí. Y en catalán, un gos. Gos. Mm. So, it's a dog, right? Exactly. Yes. Dog. Yes. Okay, that was an easy one. That was an easy one, yeah. I think. Uh, obviously, <laughs> yeah. there, there could be other uh, pets as well, you know, but that's why I asked the question about the personality. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say what I find interesting about the Catalan word, even if I uh, will not know the etymology of all words, but in the case of gos, It's uh, the same sound that we do in, in Swedish when we are, uh, I mean, the etymology of it is the same sound that we do in Swedish when we're calling an animal, especially cats. For some reason, we do x -x 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 -x. So, yeah, it has the same origin. And, uh, uh, okay, and how do you... As the word goes. Yes, but you use that to, for cats, not for dogs. In Swedish, for cats. And... Okay. Uh, Apparently, in Catalan, uh, maybe a thousand years ago, I don't know exactly when, people did gos, gos, gos instead, and it became the name of the animal. Mm -hmm. Interesting, because in Polish, we, we, we called cats kichi, 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 kichi. Mm, okay. Uh, and its form of kot, kot mm. is cat. In Polish, kot, but also like the denominative, denominative form is kicha, uh, and then kichi kichi is is the the, uh, the way we we call uh, we, we address cats. Uh, what about Bulgarian? How do you? Do uh, well, uh, when we call cats, um, I'm not sure if it's different. I'm pretty sure it's different in the West compared to the East because of uh, dialectal uh, differences in uh, villages and stuff like that. But I can say that from where I'm from in the East, we, we typically use the uh, diminutive um, uh, which, um, which is a, a contraction of, um, of the word um, uh, pisana, which uh, could be another word for cat, but it's like very colloquial, very slangy, like... Uh, um, It's basically describing what sound the cat makes, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not uh, describing the exact meowing sound the cats make, but more so that they are like, if you translate it literally, uh, it, it means a screaming animal. But uh, even though we all know that they're not screaming, they're just, uh, you know, meowing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. for cats, we use this mainly. In the east, I don't know. I don't know about the west, but I'm pretty sure it's different over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about dogs? Like, how do you call dogs? Um, actually, I'm not too sure about that. We do have a dog at home, but uh, um, most people I know just call their dogs by their names. They don't use uh, specific sounds. Though when I was little, I did recall. Uh, some family friends of ours using a specific sound to refer to their dogs, but for the life of me, I cannot remember what that was. Uh, I, I could very easily remember the cat one, but for the dog one, I have no clue. But yeah, most people I know usually call their dogs by their names, like a very shortened version of their names. Uh, uh, for example, yeah. 
Okay, okay. W what about uh, your languages, Nisa? In my languages, how we call different animals. How you call dogs specifically. Ah, right. Uh, no, I, I was thinking the same thing as called that uh, we normally shorten the, the names of the animal, uh, sorry, of the dog. Um, but uh, yeah, I might be biased, but that's in my experience at least. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think in Polish we would, at least in some regions, uh, we would say like na na na, na. Uh, yeah, now maybe Polish people in the comment section is go going to <laughs> claim otherwise, but that's that's my experience. <laughs> na 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 uh, for dogs. Uh, so that's that's interesting. Mm, great. So you know what? Uh, we have another caller who wants to join. So let's add Andrew. Um, hello, Andrew. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear Excellent. you. So, so thanks for calling back, uh, Andrew. I know you speak French, right? Maui. <laughs> yes. So, so I think you would be a perfect uh, person for this challenge as well. So, Andrew, just uh, to remind us, where are you calling from, and what languages do you speak? Sure. So, I'm calling from Ireland. Uh, English is my native language, but I also speak French, some Spanish, and some Irish. So. Yeah, um, and I think this is this is the first time I've called in. I haven't had a connection or camera or sound issues, so we're off to a good start. <laughs> yes, that, that's great. So, uh, do you have anything to add to the discussion we had? Like, how do you um, like call cats, or like how do you attract cats? Like, or you want to call them uh, in so they come to you? Uh, do you have any special way of, of of calling them in Irish, for example? Um, not that I know of, and specifically in Irish and like the Irish speaking regions, but it's, I think the, the sound for calling cats seems to be universal because it's, it's kind of the same in Ireland. It's like a, tss, tss, tss. it's like a, like a, I don't know how do you, how do you describe that? Like a, like a really short hissing sound. Onomatopoeic maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Onomatopoeic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, it's the same as the other, what the other languages do, it seems. And then for dogs, um, personally, I would whistle. Or kind of click like something like that. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. maybe a bit louder, or they won't hear me. But <laughs> and I think, um, like you said, some people just call dogs by their names. But I, don't, I can't think of like an onomatopoeic sound for calling dogs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you're right. Actually, because dogs, we can train dogs, right? So we would say like heel, like or donogi, mm -hmm. like come to. Uh, come here and the dogs understand so maybe maybe that's why we don't really have like a typical way of calling them um yeah but that's interesting so before we move on to the next challenge just a, a question to you because you you come you all call, come from like different cultures so i, I wonder is there any way that uh, uh, what is the way that uh, for you to uh, uh to scare away birds, or if you don't want the birds to be here, you just say, say something to them. Like, what do you say to them for them to go away? Uh, maybe let's start with Bulgarian. Uh, like the sound we use to scare away birds. Mm -hmm. Well, from my understanding, I think the most common one is kush, which basically means shoe, like shoe, go away, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, yeah. That's that's the one I can uh, think of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. What about you, Nisa? Catalan, Spanish, Swedish? Yeah, so in Catalan, I would say the most usual word would be fuch, 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 fuch. And uh, uh, it surprised me that I heard some people from the Netherlands that used a similar word. Um, well, not specifically, specifically for birds, but uh, uh, for animals in general. And they said uh, what sounded in my ears is like the uh, fui, but yeah, uh, a bit shorter. So fui, fui, fui. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a connection there, but 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 is it is it just for birds or uh, for any animal? No, for any animal. It it literally means uh, well scram or like uh, <laughs> get lost, I mm -hmm. suppose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what about you, Andrew? 
Yeah, I think in Ireland, I mean, if you're not just waving your hands or throwing something at the birds, you might just say shoo or go away. But it's interesting, Nisa, that you said fui, or fui because it makes me think of the French verb fuir, to flee. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, wonder if there's a connection exactly. there. Yeah, yeah, it the yeah, yeah. yeah. It were, yeah, that's exactly the right translation. I don't know. Ah, I couldn't cool. come up with a better translation than Scrum. <laughs> but yeah, to flee <laughs> is the right word. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting. In Polish, we just say show, show, but only for birds, only for birds. Uh, good. So, uh, Andrew, what was your experience? What is your experience with Catalan? Um, um, limited. I, I find I can understand a good bit of it because I already have French and Spanish, but I I've, I've never studied Catalan or I've never been to Catalonia. So no, no formal experience. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I think we could do another uh, challenge with um, Catalan, Nisa, if you, if, you, if you would like to do that uh, for us. I'm going to send you a link with a random word generator. All right. Okay, so maybe you could find a word that is uh, slightly more difficult for us to guess, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, yep. So, so there is that. I'm really hoping that my rusty vocabulary in French won't uh, uh, fail me in this challenge. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to use just my limited Spanish, so <laughs> we're just gonna do whatever we we, we can. Um, sure. mm -hmm. But let's let's think about like the way to the the best way to. Mm, present the words okay so maybe uh, Nisa before you reveal the correct answer you will let everybody uh, present their guess okay and then you will mm -hmm. tell who was right so whenever you're ready d'accord doncs es una persona però no la part externa no la part superficial sinó la part de dins després no durant la vida, sinó després de la vida. És la part eh, que segons la religió en part eh, és la més important d'una persona, però no normalment d'animals. Teniu preguntes? Hmm. Donc, ah oui, euh, j'ai compris de... que, que c'est euh, une euh, partie de l'humain euh, qui, qui n'est pas externe, euh, mais plutôt interne. Euh, et aussi que, que c'est la, la partie la, la, la plus importante euh, euh, d'un humain. Euh, et... Euh, et donc j'ai j'ai un mot mais euh, 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 ouais <rire> <rire> pro pro puc donar més informació una miqueta més d'informació <rire> um, si no si no teniu més preguntes no Andrew euh, alors je pense que je pense que je connais euh, ce qu'il est alors c'est c'est pas un organ parce que c'est pas c'est pas une chose physique c'est pas corporel c'est euh, c'est une idée plutôt euh, symbolique ou euh, spiritueuse c'est c'est proche non si però falta un détail important que no he dit un détail molt rellevant és que no és durant la vida sinó que és després de la vida és quan yeah. s'ha acabat la vida. La vida ja no hi és, la vida ja no hi és, i llavors aquesta part teva surt de la part física segons alguna gent, segons algunes creences, algunes... Eh, sí, eh, no científicament, però segons gent eh, es pensa que surt aquesta part no material i potser està en un castell, pot estar en una casa, pot fer soroll, pot fer 
eh, sons durant la nit mentre tu estàs intentant dormir eh, i eh, pot sortir amb pel·lícules de por, amb pel·lícules eh, de ficció en què mm, intenten que eh, intenten sorprendre't i que passis por. No sé si teniu més preguntes ara o menys. Alors, maintenant, je suis plus confus. Euh, donc, je n'étais pas, j'étais pas correct. Du coup, c'est pas, c'est, ça, ça a pas le même sens d'une organe. Et est-ce que tu as dit, euh, je pense au début, tu as dit ça a une, une connotation religieuse ou euh, j'ai mal compris? Eh, sí, però era una introducció. Volia dir que pr primer volia fer-vos pensar en una paraula per fer-vos arribar a una altra paraula. O sigui, ah, bon. la, par la part que havíeu compresa era correcta, jo crec, probablement, eh, i que pot tenir connotacions més o menys religioses o menys, com a mínim, no científiques, això segur, i la segona part és més difícil és més eh, difícil d'explicar, de, però mm, si penseu en pel·lícules, eh, si penseu en, en filmacions, en films en què surten, eh, per exemple, un castell encantat o una casa encantada, llavors també poden sortir aquest tipus de presències no corpòries. Ok, i quan, quan tu dius... Eh... Encantada, c'est correct. Mm -hmm. Ça veut dire que quelque chose qui a une présence, mais c'est pas nécessairement physique. Mm -hmm. Et cette chose ça nous nous donne mieux. Ouais, j'en sais, j'en sais maintenant. Ouais. Si, oh. si, donne un peu eh, miedo. Miedo, ah, c'est bien. Entonces podemos présenter nuestras euh, euh, Nuestros bon, answers, respuestas. Oh, oralmente, oralmente, oralmente. We can, we can just present. We don't have to write it. We don't have to write it. Okay. Uh, so let's start with Force Andrew. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in French, uh, phantom or spectre. Uh -huh. uh, or Carl? in English, go, ghost. Uh -huh. uh, Carl? Yeah, I was going to say a similar thing. Um, uh, I was going to say esprit, uh, which is spirit, though not the same as ghost, I feel like. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was my uh, guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was fantasma in Spanish or ghost in uh, English. Uh, yeah, so which one is correct? You're all correct. Fantasma in Catalan. So it's the same word. As in ah. uh, fantasmas. Okay, that, that, that's good. For a moment, I thought it was a soul, you know? Yeah, same. that's what I thought at the start as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. the way I was trying to lead you. Uh, maybe it was more confusing, oh. but yeah. So it actually yeah, worked. I, I was thinking of something that had a, it was like, I think it sounded like something that was kind of, it was human, like it was part of being human, human almost, but it was wasn't part of the body so i thought oh it's like an abstract concept like a soul mm -hmm. uh, yeah but it was more it was less abstract it was actually like the the the, the ghosts that yeah. appear uh, to us you know and uh, try to scare us so uh, yeah. yeah i should probably mention the irish word as well while i'm here uh, yeah. Taisha is the irish word or Taisha for ghost mm -hmm. and for the spirit or soul they have a different word yeah on them Anam. Okay. Anam. So it's, yeah, so A N A M, Anam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about uh, uh, Catalan? The, the difference between ghost and a soul? Ah, eh, fantasma y aspirit. Aspirit, okay. Uh, and uh, what about Bulgarian? Uh, for, for ghost, it's either duch or, or prizrak. Um, which uh, the second one is more common with uh, Eastern uh, Slavic languages, I feel like, uh, especially Ukrainian, I feel like. I remember it from one of the first uh, challenges I uh, participated in. Uh, but as for soul, we have the word uh, dusha. 
Mm -hmm. And in Polish, we also uh, have the word dusza for soul and duch for a spirit uh, or uh, a ghost. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting because in English, you have spirit and ghost, right? But yeah. in Polish, we have only duch, which is either spirit or ghost. Yeah, and yeah, spirits can have... For us. Yeah, spirit can have a, the connotation of a ghost in English, but it's more like a literary term or a, it's it's slightly more abstract than just saying ghost. You can also say specter in English, but again, that's a bit more rare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, so that that was uh, uh, much more more difficult to, to guess, so that, <laughs> that's, that's good. So, um, uh, Nisa, you said that uh, what other uh, Romance languages you speak? You speak Catalan and Spanish. Uh, yeah, I can make myself. Uh, yeah, and I can make myself understood in Italian most days and Portuguese sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't studied much French and uh, no, no Romanian, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you also speak Swedish, and Swedish is a Germanic language. We all speak. Uh, English, which is a Germanic language, believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe you could give us a, a word to guess in Swedish. You know, it's it seems it's going to be very difficult, but we can try. You know, sure, and see what yeah, we can get. Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah. Do you need another another? Uh, uh, do you need some time to find the word, or you already have an idea? No, I, I already prepared it uh, using your your link. Okej, okay, that's good then. Mm. Så att det, ja, vi börjar med att tänka på att det är en sorts regn, så en sorts vatten som faller från himlen. Så vatten, för det första, som, som faller så att eh, den är någonstans uppe först och sen så faller den ner, det här vattnet. Och det här vattnet är väldigt kallt, så det är inte varmt vatten, det är kallt vatten. Eh, och det kalla vattnet eh, är vitt, så eh, det, ja, den färgen eh, som, eh, som det här kalla vattnet får är oftast eh, vit, då, eller det blir vitt. Um, ja, har ni frågor hittills? Frågor? Uh. Mm. Mm. Guys, do you have any ideas? <laughs> no. What no, did you understand, I guys? Mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, cult, is that cold? Vit, yes. is, is that something to do with life or living? No. Very far off. The reason I'm thinking of that is because I'm thinking of the drink Akavit, you know, the Icelandic oh. drink, water of life. So yeah, way off. <laughs> um, the only the only things I I could pick up on were the words for sky. I, I heard something like himmel, uh, something like that, which uh, I think means sky, and the word kalt, uh, which uh, I think means cold. So I. At first, I thought of something falling from the sky that is cold, um, or, or at least colder than a raindrop. So, I guess I'm gonna uh, go with my mind, I guess and say a snowflake. Interesting, interesting. Because I I also understood that something is falling to the ground, and when it's cold, and something is wet as well. So. So then, does is a wotan? Does that mean water in Swedish? Did I hear vatan. that correct? Yeah, vatan. vatan. Uh, okay. Um, yes. This yeah. So my original thought, like now, obviously, uh, I kind of uh, heard what Carl said, and I kind of changed my mind. But my original thought was leaves, like on the trees, leaves are falling to the mm. ground. Andrew, what, what, what's your guess if you had to choose? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hijacking Carl's answer at this stage. I think it's either rain or snow, because I'm just connecting water falling from the sky that's cold. So, mm -hmm. so Nisa, what what's the correct answer? So, uh, 
the the truth is i was trying to lead you in two phases again so what i wanted <laughs> to check is if you had gotten snow and then i wanted to lead you to what carl said uh, snowflake is wow the, was the right answer Ooh. okay congratulations carl <laughs> bit of a wild guess but i'm glad it was the right one <laughs> yeah yeah well done well done Yes, it's great. Actually, it's kind of funny because today before uh, before the show, I was looking for words um, to use potentially uh, for the Polish challenge if it, if it happened. And I picked a, a snowflake. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe maybe because the winter is coming, you know, and it just <laughs> uh, it's becoming more and more relevant. Mm. Not in Ireland, though, it's... It's still very, it's still very warm, the weather here, like unseasonally warm. So I don't know what it's like in your, with you guys in your countries, is it still unseasonally warm? Yeah. Yes, it uh, is. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what temperature, but uh, yeah. yeah, just today we were talking about, about it starting to feel like, um, like fall or autumn. Yeah, in November, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, same here in Scotland. It's it's really unusually warm. Yeah, it's been it's been nice, really. Uh, the, 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 the past couple of weeks were very nice. Uh, what about the Netherlands? Well, uh, for the part of the Netherlands that I'm in, we're much further inland than uh, Amsterdam, the the uh, capital. Um, for the past uh, two weeks, I would say it's been a very solid, like fifteen degree average. Uh, uh every day and with the occasional like uh, light uh, drizzle uh but um yesterday or, or or the day before we had an unusually cold morning for november like uh i think the the low uh when i was waking up at like seven it, it was like close to zero like one degree in the morning so it felt uh it felt like um Almost like this, uh, um, kind of uh, the air felt kind of like smoky, like a, like it would feel in December in the winter. It was oh. really weird. But then later on in the day, it went up to like eleven uh, degrees, so it quickly went back to normal. But yeah, As, aside from that one wild card morning, uh, the weather was, I would say, kind of the average, I, I guess, for for fall, like thirteen, fifteen degrees, I would say. Wim, Wim from the Netherlands, um, he just sa says that it's been warm until now here in the Netherlands as well. So yeah, we've got very nice warm autumn, which is great, you know. Um, but uh, the winter is coming still, so <laughs> uh, let's let's be ready. So the show is going to be happening through the winter, so hopefully I'm going to keep you guys entertained. <laughs> uh in this uh dark time uh th through the winter and i think for tonight i think that would be our final challenge we we've done quite a lot of challenges today it's been a lot of fun so thank you for calling uh you guys and uh thank you for watching to all you uh guys watching uh and commenting i i saw that you've been participating along uh which is great Next week, probably, I'm going to be uh, streaming on Thursday, not on Wednesday. So if you want to join in, um, just try to make sure you click the notification bell to know when I'm scheduling the next stream. Uh, but for today, that's all. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great night and I will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>